All right. Welcome. Happy Monday. It's been a while since uh, since we met up. It's crazy, these Monday to Wednesday classes. Um, okay, so a couple of things I wanted to show you on our Moodle page because uh, February 6th is uh, just around the corner next Monday, right? Uh, test number one. I did post, um, I posted it at the top so you'd always know where to find it. But uh, so here there's a formula sheet at the bottom of the list. And so I'll introduce part of the formula sheet today. Uh, there's a reason I don't introduce it right away because it can be a little bit scary looking, uh, especially if you kind of scroll down to uh, the second page. But we're going to take it all in bite-sized pieces, so, so not to worry, we'll, we'll get there. And how cool, right? You'll know how to deal with all those uh, by the end of the course. So uh, today we are going to introduce merchandising, uh, which we're going to use all these formulas. And so there's, there's kind of a lot of notation that we need to talk about. Um, so I'll introduce that formula sheet, and it's just at the top of our Moodle page. And then uh, let's see here, where are we? Week four. Uh, today we're going to do section 3.2. On Wednesday, we're going to do section 3.3. On Wednesday, there will be a quiz on today's material. Okay, that's just to kind of get you get you moving, okay? Um, and so there's an assignment, which is quite long. And the reason for that is I just wanna prepare you for the quiz, right? So uh, so do the assignment basically, you know, to practice for the quiz. And even though it's due after the quiz, I would make sure that you're, you're happy with your knowledge on assignment three before you move on to the quiz, okay? Uh, because 3.3 is quite a large section, I, I won't be able to give you any time during the uh, class on Wednesday to give you the quiz, but it will be open all, uh, all day. I try to, but, but I just, I know there's so much material. It's crazy. Um, then we have test one on Monday. Uh, I'll post a practice test, okay? Um, I wanted to kind of get a feel for how people were feeling. So uh, I guess the two options are, it's only open during class time, which was, was my initial kind of plan. Uh, but then I thought, well, I guess I could just have it open all day, just like the quizzes. And then the time that you get is, uh, is the hour and 20 minutes. So, uh, or uh, sorry, not the hour and 20 minutes. I guess it's a, a, an hour and 50 minutes that we need for, right? Which would be plenty of time to write this test. Um, so I could just have it be a longer timed quiz and you can do it during the day, um, any time, or during the, the class time. The benefit of doing it dur just during the class time is that I would just be sitting here on Zoom waiting for if you have any questions. Test one, I think, is usually fine. But just think about those two options. And um, if you feel strongly one way or another, then let me know. OK. Test number one is on chapters one, two, and three. But chapter one was just to get us uh, math primed, right? So um, all right. I decided to post the examples that I'll be referring to, right? And so that way you don't have to write them down. You can just refer to the example numbers. And then um, and then if you wanted to write them down later, you can, but uh, it, it should save us a little bit of writing, okay? So these are the examples that we're gonna work through today with a little bit of luck, okay? Um, so let's get started. Okay. Uh, 
can't remember what chapter three is called. Oh, well. Um, chapter three. All right, fine, I'll find it. Uh, okay. Oh. There. Uh, bah, bah, bah. All to find out what chapter three is called. There's got to be an easier way. There is, but I'm too deep. Business economics. And it's almost like I arrived at it, but the screen is just lagging. Chapter three is called Business Economics. And uh, a lot because, um, because we had a weird first week, I'm, I've decided to cut sections 3.1 and 3.4. Uh, if you were excited to learn a little bit of calculus, then you'll be sad. If you are not interested in learning calculus, then you'll be happy. Um, either way, they're cut. So here, not covering 3.1 and 3.4 which moves us right into section 3.2, which is called merchandising. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in, so here's from the formula sheet and notice that this whole section is on merchandising. Now, a lot of these formulas we don't actually need uh, because we can develop them, right? But it's nice to have them. Okay. So here, this is the first time that we're introducing the formula sheet. So here, in order for us to be able to use this formula sheet, we need to talk about things like what does N stand for, right? What does L stand for? What does D stand for? What does S stand for? C, M, M again, okay. Some duplicates, nice. E, P, right? And so we'll go through this list. Um, I'm gonna do a couple at a time, okay? Um, just so we can, just so we can see what's going on here. So I'm gonna, Circle it in orange and say N is the net price. Okay. And the net price is going to be the price to acquire the, the product. So the, the cost essentially, but we don't wanna use the word cost because uh, it's kind of reserved for something else. Okay, but it's the, the net price, so the, the cost or the price, so net price, which we'll say is the price to acquire the product. at each level of the distribution chain. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, at each level of the distribution chain. Okay. So if you think about uh, a typical kind of sales scenario, it has a distribution chain, right? So I make a product um, I can't think of anything I, I can make, but uh, let's say I make a product and I sell it to someone for $5. So then that person markets it, right? Puts in time and effort and, and kind of uh, puts its own spin on it maybe. Uh, and then they sell it for $12, right? 
but uh, at each level, right? First it cost $5 and then the, the net price was $12 and so on and so forth. And then they sell it to someone else, uh, and, right? And so uh, we'll have a net price and there's going to be a net price at each level of the distribution chain. Yeah. The next one is L, so a capital L. L is the list price. Oh, I forgot to put and the bracket here. The list price, and this, this can be uh, kind of confusing in my opinion. The list price is the suggested sales price, right? So the, so the suggested price of this item. So especially if you go to winners or whatever, uh, they always have the, the suggested retail price and then their price is so much lower, right? And so then the, the list price would be that suggested retail price. So the list price is the price at which a product is suggested to be sold, is suggested to be sold at, by the manufacturer, let's clarify. I would do brackets, but I already started with brackets uh, by the manufacturer. So I say, oh yeah, well, I'm selling this product. You get it for $5, but I suggest that you sell it for $30 when you're done with it. Right. So that would be the list price. Okay. Now what's tricky about the list price it can be hard to pick up on in, in a question, right? What the list price is. So we've got a couple of examples. Um, and then a lowercase d is going to be the discount. So what color can I use? Let's use green. Oops, keep it green. So D is the trade discount rate. So at each level of the distribution chain, there's going to be some discount, right? Oh, I'll give you at um, I'll give you this uh, this item, right? I'll sell you this item for forty percent less than the list price, right? And so forty for forty percent off the list price. Well, that gives me the net price, right? That's how much it would cost you to buy this imaginary thing off of me. So the trade discounts uh, discount rate is the discount potentially more than one. Uh, so discounts applied at each step of the distribution chain. If there are multiple discounts, right, then you wouldn't just have D, you would have D1, D2, D3, right? And so in the case of multiple discounts, which we'll see an example of, I think now I can't remember. In the case of multiple discounts, um, we denote them, we denote 
sure them by d subscript one d oops sorry this first d looked weird d1 d2 all the way up to um and let me just on the slide dk let me just match what's on the formula sheet without talking about it quite yet okay so now right if if we have some some discount right so 60 percent discount rate uh and then off of uh a list price of thirty dollars, right? What would you do? Sixty percent discount. Well, what's remaining is not the sixty percent; it's the forty percent, right? So it's one minus sixty percent, or 0. 0.6 times the list price gets you the net price. And here, if you kind of scoot over to the right hand side, right, we have the same idea, but now I have multiple discounts. Right, and so here I have multiple discounts, but they behave in the same way, right? And so for that reason, we've also already introduced N and L for multiple discounts, right? That's the only difference that we're seeing there. Okay. So. <clears throat> What we'll say is the net price is the list price minus the trade discount. Okay. Now the trade discount is an amount, right? And it's a, a, an amount based off of the list price. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have N is L minus L times some discount rate, right? So N is, now here's where we had to, why we had to practice our, our factoring a little bit, right? Because now I can rewrite this as L times one minus a D, right? And maybe what I'll do is I'll write this, is on the formula sheet. I'll try to remember to do that for all of them, right? But, or with multiple discounts, then we have N is L times one minus D1 times one minus D2 times 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 one minus dk which is also on the formula sheet allowing for k discounts okay we're ready for an example i talked long enough about this here uh, uh oh wrong section there we go we're gonna do example 78. Okay. Rawlings is offering a trade discount of 38% off bats to sporting goods stores. What will be the cost to a sporting goods store to purchase a bat listed at $135. So this is where we need to get a little, little, okay, um, nitpicky, right? Pick this thing apart, figure out what information we have, and, uh, and then we can put it all together and we can solve the problem. So the, the bat itself, the list price is 135. Right. That's the it's not the first piece of information that we got, but it's the first one that I'm I'm landing on and I'm reading and I'm saying, okay, list price 135. Got it. Okay. So now 
And I'm going to try to use the same colors, although it might be tricky. Green for the trade discount, because what this 38% says that D is 0.38, right? We have to use decimals uh, in our math, otherwise it won't, it won't work. And so what will be the cost to a sporting goods store, right? And so that's, that's the same as saying the net price, right? Because there's a cost to the store, but then there's a cost to us, the, the consumer, right? You go and buy something and it's going to be a cost uh, and it'll be close to 135, right? But so when we talk about costs, we need to differentiate uh, to whom. And so what will be the cost to the sporting goods store is really asking for what is N, right? Okay, a lot of the time, looking at the information that you have, um, that will put you towards a formula that you want to use, right? In this case, if I'm solving for N, I have two options, right? But I only have one discount. And so this first formula is the one I want. Oh, it's not catching up here. It's a little laggy today. Um, uh, L times one minus D. Okay. So I have N is L times one minus D. So just a quick note, because this, this is where we start doing work, right? Uh, everything up until now has been just kind of for fun and just for learning um, different skills, but now we're solving problems, right? And so um, on the test, you'll have to submit your written work, okay? It's not for marks or anything, but I just, in case I need to refer to it, right? If, if there's an answer that's not quite right, but close, then I want to be able to look back and, and adjust your marks and give you marks if you uh, deserve them. All right. And so uh, make sure that your written work is still somewhat organized. Okay. Um, so I always start with the blank formula that I'm about to use, because then that helps guide me when I'm putting values in. So I'm solving for N, which N L was 135 and one minus 0.38. Okay. So I get 135 dealing with the brackets first times 0.62. Right. You if there's a 38% discount, you have to pay 62% of that amount, right? Same thing. And that's what we saw with the taxes last day, too. So N is, um, I wonder if I've rounded this value in my notes. Can't remember, 8370. <clears throat> so then the cost of the bat to the store is $83.70. Nice. How about another example? Uh, what takes a while uh, is to figure out how these questions are worded, right? Because often what you'll see, if you read enough of these problems, uh, a pattern will start to emerge. And then even if the wording is not quite clear, Right. Sometimes I just know what we're supposed to solve for. And that's not something I expect out of you, uh, but it is something that you can work towards. Right. If you read enough problems and figure out what they want you to solve for. Right. Then you kind of you get the idea right away. OK, so I'm, that's why I have lots of examples. Okay. TI calculators are sold to the retailer at a net price of thirty two fifteen per calculator. While the retailer sells a calculator for the list price of 
What was the trade discount given to the retailer? Yeah. So uh, this is basically one of those questions that you had to do on quiz one. Okay, uh, I'll sort of <laughs> not solve anything, but you had to solve for D, right? And so, and oh, I did go through all of quiz one and I adjusted your grade. So now whatever your quiz one grade is, is the proper grade. And I'll do that for all your quizzes, all your tests, uh, because if it's a little typo or something like that, then I want you to have those marks. Or even if you're on the right track, um, I want you to have part marks. Okay? But that's hard to do in an online uh, exam. So I have to do it afterwards, but they're all adjusted now. Okay, so what did you do on um, on the quiz? Well, first, I guess I'll highlight what information we have. We're told that N is 32.15. And the list price, right? The retailer sells the calculator for the list price. L is 43.95. What was the trade discount? Okay. okay, so now we're gonna do what you had to do on quiz one, right? Quiz number one, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, N is L times one minus D, solve for D, I think. So there's, there's always many ways that you can solve these problems, right? Obviously you can just go ahead and put in the values and, and rearrange them that way. Or if you wanna have kind of a permanent solution, you can solve for D and then you can always use that formula, right? But you'll have to do the derivation first. So if you have N is L times one minus D, First thing you'll need to do is you'll need to divide both sides by L. N over L is one minus D. Here's where our, there's many, like I said, many, many different routes that you can take, okay? But I am going to, uh, not the most elegant, but I'm gonna just brute force it. So I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. So n, n over L minus one is negative D. Huh? Now I have to force a common denominator here, right? And I can multiply both sides by negative one. I can do that all in one step, uh, but I'm gonna hold off for a little bit longer. So I have N over L um, minus L over L. Right, one can be replaced by L over L and still be the same as negative D. Now that I have a common denominator, I have N minus L over L is negative D. So what can I do? I can move, well, first I'm gonna do that revolving door trick. It's not a trick thing that I always do. D is negative N minus L over L. But then when I bring in this negative, right, I get negative N plus L. So D is negative N plus L over L. Depending on where you put the negative, right? You could put the negative down front and not do not bring it inside. I'm keeping it in the numerator. So now I'm gonna rearrange this. Negative N plus L is the same thing as L minus N over L. And now I can use this, right? And so that's where, where you got to in the quiz, right? But now I can use this if I have L and I have N. L is 43.95 and N is 
So now if I can solve for D, I'll move it over so it's a little bit um, kind of off to the side. Uh, L is 4395 minus N, which is 3215 divided by L, which is 4395. <clears throat> Let's see here. Gonna use brackets, 4395 minus uh, 3215, end bracket, then divided by 4395, and I get 0.2685%. Ah. 0.84, I wonder if I can copy this, cannot, 0.268. Four eight six nine one seven. Four eight six nine one seven. I think I'll leave it in the. <laughs> might might have switched two things over. Or twenty six eighty five percent. Right is the trade discount. Right. You want to see how much the discount amount was related to 4395. Makes sense <laughs> to me, at least. Uh, but you can convince yourself that it makes sense. Okay. Um, let's do another example. Do it on a fresh page here. So we need a little bit of room here. Discounts of 25% and 45% were given on the purchase of wine. The list price for the wine was $32.50 per bottle. And there's two parts to this question. What was the net price to the retailer? And what single discount would be equivalent to the 25 and 45% discounts? Okay. And so, First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show that D1 is 0.25 and D2 is 0.45. Got two discounts now. Okay. The list price, I think I've been using pink, 32.50. So part A, we want to find the net price. Uh, sure. The net price, which is L times one minus D1, but then we have two discounts, right? So one minus D1 times one minus D2. Okay. So the net price is 32.50 times one minus 0.25 times one minus 0.45. Lost my place in the notes. So for a second. 32.50. One minus 0.25 is 0.75. One minus 0.45 is 0.55. Now I'm just multiplying across, right? So once I've uh, simplified inside the brackets, then I can just multiply across. So now I have 13.40625. So the final price, money is always to two decimal places, right? Is 1341. Okay, now here, 
this problem, let's see here. Uh, copy. Oh. Now I'm putting in effort here because it's an important uh, type of question. Okay, so here. This is an important question. A version of it will show up on test one. It'll show up on the final exam. Okay, so it's really important that we, we just fundamentally understand what's happening here. Okay, so, and you can bet it's on quiz two as well, right? On this section. Right, so here it'll be, I'll say, well, I know it's on test two, or sorry, test, test number one, uh, final exam. Okay, quiz number two, right? So some version of this question uh, it keeps showing up and it is really important, right? Because what's, what's a really tempting thing to do? Right. Well, 25% and 45% up off. I just add those two up. Right. Wrong. No, no. And so that's what I want to show you is that it, it does not become the same thing. Okay. So this, this is a really important question to know how to deal with. Okay. And from me blabbing, maybe you have already figured it out. Okay. Maybe. Um, so what we want to do is we have, uh, we need the list price to be 3250 still, and we just found that N has to be 1341. So then I'm going to force N to be 1341. Yeah. And then we need to find the single discount, right? So what single discount would be equivalent to the 25 and 45% discounts, right? And so um, to find D. For a little bit of practice, of course, you're, if you have derived this formula, right? And so what we did here up above is we we came from one formula and then we derived the formula for d right if you have shown me that you've derived that formula already right then that's fine you can go ahead and use it but just for practice rearranging and stuff how about i just start from this this first formula right we're going to go through the same steps but with the values now I always prefer to have fewer formulas, right? Because then it's not so crowded. I can find what I'm looking for. And it just, to me, it makes it a lot easier, but you'll have to figure out what you prefer. Your, your quizzes and your tests and your final exam, they're all open book, right? And so if you have a, a way that solving things that you prefer, then make sure you have like a nice solid formula sheet going and on the side so that you can refer to it quickly, right? You don't want to be overwhelmed with material to go through. Okay. okay. N is L times one minus a D. Oh, no. So our final exam is just online. I checked. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a, that was a point of confusion because there are other math courses that are also online, math and stats courses that are also online, but then there's an on-campus final exam, and that is not the case for us. 
So very confusing. I, I had to check and I forgot to tell you guys. So, uh, but we, ours is just online. I never get to see you. All right. You never get to see me. 1341 is 3250 times one minus D. Divide both sides by, yeah. If you're ever on campus, you can come see me. I'll be there. Uh, um, we have to divide both sides by 3250. So I get 1341 divided by 3250 is one minus D. I'm going to simplify the 1341 divided by 3250. 0.4126. I'll keep it there because um, it is longer. But I'll paste in the whole calculator step. Uh, next, in fact, I'm going to clear that one there. Uh, is one minus D. What's another thing that we could do, right? If you don't want to use the negative and have to deal with the negative later, right? You could do 0.4 minus one and then on the negative it. <laughs> That's not a word. Uh, or another thing I could do is I could add D to both sides and then move the 0. 0.4126 over to the right-hand side. So that's what I'm going to do in this take. 0. 0.4126 plus D is 1. So D is 1 minus 0. 0.4126. So 1 minus the previous answer. And so then the single discount that would be equivalent would be, let's see here, D equal to 0 0.58738461546154. Okay. I can't remember if I if I have checked with you guys, but this these three dots mean therefore. Okay. So therefore, the single discount, right? that would be equivalent to 25% followed by 45%, right? That's equivalent to 58.74%. Uh, Therefore, a single discount of 58.74% is equivalent to um discounts of 25% and 45%, right? In that order. Order doesn't matter, but just so we're clear. Okay. And so notice that it's not the same as 25 plus 45, which would be what 70? Right. So here, note, not 70%. Okay. So it's really, really, really important.
Okay. And maybe I'll clarify where I got that 70 from. Not 25 plus 45 equals 70%. All right. It's 58.74. Okay. The next section we're going to talk about is uh, called markups. Okay. And so um, if you are running a store, then you're you're buying an item. So let's think about maybe those bats. So you, you own a sporting goods store and you're buying these bats and they, they cost you some amount. How do you decide what you're going to sell them for? Well, you have to uh, take into account markups. Now, markups are things like profit, your, your overhead expenses, right? Which can then kind of uh, overhead expenses are is an umbrella term for many, many expenses, right? Your staff, your rent, uh, all that kind of fun stuff. And so uh, now we're, we're going to learn some, some kind of basic formulas around markups. Now, markups are on your formula sheet here. And so we're just going to keep working through our formula sheet. And let's see here. You know what? It's not real paper. So <laughs> otherwise, it would feel like such a waste of space. But oh. hey. So markups are in this section here. Oh, that looked weird. Yeah. So here's the, the markups. It's quite large. Yeah. And then we're going to have markdowns. Yeah. I guess I'll do it as a just so we know. Okay. And just so we're not confused, it's this whole chunk. Okay. But we're we're going to massage it. There's there's quite a bit of uh, fluff in here, in my opinion. So um, let's see what we can do. All right. So just like before, right, I want to just go through some of this notation and then we'll be able to, um, and then we'll be able to talk about it. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to reuse colors. Hopefully you guys, Okay with that. So S is the selling price. Okay. Which is going to be the price that you sell the item for. Okay. Now, what the thing about markups that can be confusing is that it's from the perspective of the store owner. Most of the, again, so here's where it gets confusing. Most of the time. Um, and so markups, right, are from the perspective of the store owner. Okay. Whereas for the trade discounts, it wasn't necessarily for the store owner, but now we're going to settle down and, and pretend that we're the store owner for the most part. Okay. So the selling price is the price you are selling the item for. Nothing, nothing crazy here. Okay. C 
is the cost of the item to you as the store owner. This is also going to be what? The net price at the store owner level. Okay, so that can be kind of confusing. Okay, C is the cost of the item. And maybe I should have it in brackets of the item, oops, of the item to the store owner. This is the same as the net price at the store owner level, right? The net price can move through all the different distribution chains, but if you are the store owner, the cost of the thing is the net price of the item, okay? Uh, same as the net price at the store owner level. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, what's the next thing here? M is the markup. M is the markup. Now, what's important is that it's an amount. It's a dollar amount, okay? So the amount in money, right, of the markup. Now, we use the term markup in, in our uh, daily lives, right? So I'm not too concerned about kind of defining it, um, but also the formula sheet is going to do it for us. Okay. So the markup is made up of two components, typically. The markup is made up of two components. Right, and that's going to be, so here, if you go from M down to M again, you have E plus P. Okay, so color can I use here? E, and here is a list. So these are kind of subgroups of the markup. E is the overhead expenses, okay? Um, or the expenses, but usually we talk about overhead. Right, overhead costs, overhead expenses. Uh, you don't want to use O because it looks like zero. So that can be very confusing in a mathematical equation. And so that's why we don't use O, uh, right? So that's why we use E. Okay. Which is the cost of uh, running the business. per item usually. Okay. Now that's not, yeah, we'll, we'll see examples. Okay. Uh, time to find a new color here. Purple maybe. P. And I, I guess I should use green here. Right. So P is the profit. Okay. It's the amount of profit per item. Amount of profit per item. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So what we have is our selling price right, 
the price that we're going to sell an item is going to be made up of two things, right? The cost of the item. And the markup. In terms of the uh, notation that we just developed, right? That's going to be S is C plus M, which is on your formula sheet. So I'll highlight it like this. Or if you're going to break up M, right, into the overhead expenses and the profit, right, then or S is C plus E plus P, right, since since the markup is E plus P, right, M I can just replace with E plus P, and this is also on your formula sheet. And I think this is on your formula sheet too. You probably don't need it though. Okay. So if we go back here, all right, then I have S is equal to C plus M which inside M you have E and P. We're just picking away at these formulas, right? Not too bad. It's overwhelming the first time you look at it. Uh, but once you really get to know the, the formula sheet, it's really just meant to help you out, okay? A lot of these things you can just remember just by, I don't know, logic. Uh, but you shouldn't have to do that. Okay. I think we're ready. I kind of went rogue here. Uh, I think we're ready for an example, though. I haven't seen any other questions. Let's go for it. Going to do uh, example 86. So, one thing to remember is that there's not just one way to solve any of these problems anymore, right? It depends on how your brain works. Sometimes there's a more obvious way of solving things, uh, but I don't want you to be kind of turned off if I don't solve it the way that you did, right? Just as long as you're getting to the same place and you're not using any illegal math to get there, uh, then I don't, there's nothing wrong with how you did it, okay? So, or if you did use a different way, then, uh, and if you're not sure, then you can run it by me. But in general, if you get the same results, then you did it. Uh, okay. A retailer speaker purchases his stock from the manufacturer for $64.29. Okay. In order to determine his selling price, he adds 15% of the cost for overhead and 20% of the cost for profit. Uh-oh. What is the selling price of the speakers? Okay. So... There are many different ways that you can go about solving this, right? But in the end, we want to solve for S. I can't remember what we used, color we used for S. Okay. So we want to solve for S. Okay. And a retailer purchases his stock from the manufacturer for $64.29. That's another way of saying that the cost, so C, is $64.29. Okay. Then 15% 
of the cost, so this cost here, the 64.29 is for overhead and then 20% of the cost is for profit. Okay, so what this is saying is, uh, can't remember what the colors were. Okay, good. E is 0.15 of the cost, 15% of the cost, which is, so 0.15 times C. <laughs> Oops. And 20% of the cost for profit. So P is 0 0.20 times the cost. Now, because we already know what C is, right, we can plug in C in both of these scenarios and have values, right? And so, um, but that's for, for kind of math learning reasons, I'm going to show you another way, right, where you just keep these variables because you don't necessarily have this variable always, right? And so that's the skill that I want to teach you. Okay. So just looking at this information, right, that tells me which formula to use, right? I need to use S equals E, you could, or uh, sorry, C. Now you could use M and then solve for M on, on its own or use that slightly bigger formula, right? This one, right? So you could use this one, uh, but then you'd have to break up M anyways, like we did down here. So I'm just gonna go for this formula right away, right? C plus E plus P. Okay. We could, and I'm going to say we could plug in C in to solve for E and P. Okay. So we could substitute C equals 64.29 to solve for E and P. But instead, we're going to practice keeping all the variables until the end. We will practice keeping all the variables until the end. Okay. <clears throat> So I have S is C plus E plus P. I'll start fresh because it's a fresh page. Um, let's see here. I want to solve for S. I have C. So what I'm going to do, because I have C as a variable in both E and P, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it as C. So even though I know it, I'm going to write it as a variable still. And then I'm going to rewrite E and P in terms of C, like this, 0.15 times C plus 0 0.20 times C. Yeah. So now they're all in terms of C. So this is why we had to practice collecting like terms and factoring things out, because now what can I do? I can solve for, I can extract a C, right, or factor out a C. Don't forget the one here. There's one times C. So one plus 0.15 plus 0 0.20. Uh, let's see here. Uh, S is C. And you know what? I'm going to pull a fast one here. Instead of writing the coefficient in brackets, I'm going to write it. So 
1 plus 0.15 plus 0.2 is 1.35, and it's 1.35 times C. So I'm going to write it kind of cleanly right away, 1.35 times C. You can do it in multiple steps, but I want to kind of show you where you're allowed to cut corners and where you're not. Now we have C, it was 64.29. So now I'm gonna take that C and I'm gonna plug that in, all right? So here, C is 64.29. So S is 1.35 times 64.29. I'm gonna do it on our calculator here. Uh, 1.35 times 64.29, 86.7915. So S is 86.7915, which means that the selling price is going to have to be 86.79. Nice. Okay. All right. How about another example? That one's a doozy, right? But uh, you'll see some on, on the assignments and on the quiz and on the test. So let's do another one. Um, let's do, yeah, example 88. After a markup, oh, uh, oh, because, so where we got that from is from the question. So it says, uh, he adds 15% of the cost. So how you do that is you do 0.15 times C, right? And that's going to be for the overhead. So that's why E, which is the overhead, is 0.15 times C. And then same idea. Um, C is the cost of the item. So the cost, so a retailer of speakers purchases stock. So he buys the, the speaker. Uh, yeah, he buys the speaker from the retail or the manufacturer for $64.29. So it's the cost of getting this item to be able to sell it. Wait to see if there's... Uh, so yeah, so the selling price is the customer price, whereas the cost is the cost uh, of the item to the store. See. Maybe we'll do so. I'll keep working on this next example because I think it's going to be very similar. Um, I am pretty sure. Yes, and so uh, so hopefully. Uh, yeah. So so the the cost. Right, so here, going back up here. So C is the cost, right? So it's the cost of the item to the store owner, right? And so that means that, yes, it is the net price at the store owner level. Okay. So they received it at a discount from the retailer, right? And, but then there's also a suggested price that they should sell it at, which they don't necessarily sell it at.
Okay. We're going to do uh, an example that's very, very similar. Okay. So <clears throat> I need to be able to write here. Okay. After a markup of 32% of cost for the overhead expenses and a markup of 37% of the selling price for profit. So even though they're talking about the markup in both places, the markup is the combination of the overhead expenses and the profit, right? And so it's a little bit misleading, but we need to be able to, to kind of read these problems and, and still make it, make it out alive. Okay. And so here, uh, what this says, right, is what that E, E is point three two times the cost, right? And so here, I'm gonna just make a note that the term markup here, right, is uh, slightly misleading. It's how we talk about it in real life, right? Oh, well, yeah, I had to do a markup for the overhead and markup for the profit. Right, so we do use that, um, but in this case, right, markup is something special that we could solve for, and that's that's not what it's what it means. Okay. Oh yeah, thirty-seven percent of the selling price for the profit. Okay which means that P, the profit, is 0.37 times S, right? So no longer C, it's, it's S. And the car dealer sells used cars for $14,995. Just any car, I guess. Seems weird, but okay. So S is $14,995. Hmm. Uh. At what cost did the dealer purchase these cars? So we want to find. Oh. C. Looking at the information that I have, right? I have E and I have P. So there's no sense in lumping them all into M and then solving for M and then putting that into its own equation. I'm just gonna use that bigger equation right away. So I have S equals C plus E plus P, right? But then here, this overall is the markup. So I want to solve for, for C. I have S, but in the same way that we solved it before, it's going to look a lot cleaner and, uh, and quite a bit less work if we actually just keep the variables until the end and then we can substitute it in. So S is C plus, and then in play, in, instead of E, I need to rewrite it as 0 0.32 times C. And instead of P, I have 0 0.37 times S. Notice that there are two variables here, right? But I know what S is. I wanna solve for C 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my, my C's to one side and my S's to the other side, right? And then start, start massaging it until I can solve for C. Okay. So I have, I'm going to subtract 0.37 S from both sides. And so I get S minus 0.37 S is um, C plus 0.32 C. You can skip that simplification if you just go straight to 1.32C. Be really careful pulling out this S, right? Because it's 1 minus 0.37. So you have uh, 1 minus 0.37, oops, times S is 1.32 times C. 1 minus 0.37 is 0.63. S is 1.32 C. And maybe I'll just slow myself down here. C times 1 plus 0.32. I get carried away. OK. Now. You can plug in S, or if you want to just solve for C completely, you can divide both sides by 1.32. So I have, and I'm going to do my, my revolving door here. C is 0.63 times S divided by 1.32. Now S was 14,995. So plugging that in, I get C is 0.63 times 14,995 divided by 1.32. I'll use uh, our calculator here. 0.63 times 14,995. Oh, nice, nice and uh, rounded to two decimal places already. And then I'm going to take that and divide that by uh, 1.32. I'll bring it in. Uh, this one. So then the cost is right here. Rounded to two decimal places, 7,156 and 70 pennies. If you go to a used car lot, you know that the, the, the car lot itself bought the cars for cheaper than they're selling them. That's just how it works, right? And so, uh, so there's some discounts there's, they're taking into account. They have overhead, right? They want to make some profit, right? And so, um, so that's how those equations all work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Time to flex our problem solving muscles here. Uh, with another example. Cutie Pie Cosmetic Supply, cute, uh, obtains boxes of hair dye for 230 per box, less 30% and 10%. Okay. The price is set to cover Cutie Pie's overhead of 20% of the selling price and to provide an operating profit of 18% of the selling price. 
what should the retail price per box be? Let's add that here. Oh, I guess what should be the retail? Oh, sorry, I didn't read it properly. There is some poor grammar in here, but this wasn't one of those cases, I guess. It's kind of just weird to read. What should be the retail price per box? Weird. Um, okay. First thing that's a little bit tricky to tackle is what do we need to solve for here, right? It's not obvious, okay? And so the retail price per box is basically for us, from our standpoint, is going to be the selling price, right? So I want to find S. So here, we get to work with not one, but two formulas, right? And just kind of in tandem. And so um, we've got discount one is 0.3 and discount two is 0.1. Okay. The list price, is 230. Okay. And let's just remember that N is equal to the cost. Okay. To Cutie Pie Cosmetic Supply. Now, Cutie Pie has an overhead of 20% of the selling price. Okay. So E is 0 0.20 times S. And they want an operating profit of 18% of the selling pr price. 0.18. Times S. So by highlighting all the information that I've given or that I am given, uh, one, it's really, really difficult when you're first starting, right? To pick these apart. And it's it's likely going to be one of those things where uh, you're here in class and when, when I say it, it makes so much sense. And then you sit down to do it on your own and you're going, where do I even start, right? So just start small and then work your way, um, work your way out, okay? It, it will fall into place, right? But it takes practice. Okay, so um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the cost to Cutie Pie Cosmetic Supply, right? And so we will first need to find the cost of the hair dye. Okay. This is the cost to Cutie Pie Cosmetics Supply. Otherwise it's too long, right? This is the same as the net price, right? This is the same as the net price to Cutie Pie Cosmetics Supply. So really what we have to find first is the net price, right? But we have uh, the list price with the discounts, right? They didn't just tell us what it costs, right? They kind of um, are making us work for it a little bit. So N is L times one minus D1 times one minus D2. 
So we have a list price of 230 times one minus 0 0.3 oops, and times one minus 0 0.1. 230 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.9. Let's see here. One forty four ninety. I'm going to re-emphasize it because I know it's confusing, okay? And so I'm going to say the same thing again, but just hopefully it'll click uh, the more I say it, okay? So since this is the cost to Cutie Pie Cosmetics Supply, right, uh, we can say that C is 144.90. Right. It's the net price, but to Cutie Pie Cosmetic Supply, it's also the cost. So now, now I'm ready to solve for S, right? S is a function of the cost, right? I have S and S and the cost, and so now, we can solve for S. So S is C plus E plus P. C, so I'm gonna keep it in terms of the variables for a little bit longer, E was uh, 0 0.20 S plus 0 0.18 S, right? Just trying to reduce the number of variables here. Now I have two, uh, two terms in terms of S on the right-hand side. I'm gonna move those. I'm gonna collect all my S's on one side. There's only the one C, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that value in, okay? And so here, this goes in here. So then I have S minus 0 0.20, S minus 0.18, S is equal to C. So I have S times 1 minus 0 0.20 minus 0.18 is equal to 144.90. One minus 0 0.2 minus 0 0.18 makes 0 0.62 times S is 144.90. So S is 144.90 divided by 0 0.62. Do that. 144.90 divided, oops, sorry, the answer divided by 233.71, right? Once I round to two decimal places. Ta -da. So then the selling price must be 233.71. Okay. <clears throat> so these are, of course, the, the core concepts that you'll need. Uh, but we can also talk about the rate of the markup, 
right? Or um, in terms of our formula sheet, we can also talk, so we've worked with uh, one, two, three equations, right? Or I, I guess five, right? With the first th two, uh, five equations so far. So the next ones that we're gonna tackle are these ones here. So the rate of markup and gross profit margins. So the raw mu is the rate of the markup. Oops, sorry. Raw mu is the rate of the markup. Okay. And rates are percentages typically, or reported as percentages. Okay. And we have two ways of finding the raw mu, or two explicit ways of finding the raw mu. And we can use either the markup over the cost, right? And so the rate of the markup compared to what the cost of the item was, or we can also do it in terms of the gross profit margin. And so here, GPM is the gross profit margin. I'm not spending a ton of time on these because it will always just ask for what's the rate of the markup or what's the gross profit margin. And so, and I'm not, an economist or anything like that. So I'll, I'll leave that for a different course. But uh, for us, mathematically, they're quite simple to deal with, right? And so M, M is again, the markup amount, whereas the ROMU is a rate, right? So a percentage. or a decimal, right? If, if you're talking about proportions. Okay. And the gross profit margin, again, is also a percentage, but I'm not, uh, it's okay. And C is the cost. The gross profit margin is the markup amount and s is the selling price right what percentage is that markup amount compared to what you're selling things for that's your gross profit margin okay. you only have so you have these two versions to find or two formulas to find the same thing and it just depends on what information you have, right? If you have the gross profit margin and you're asked to find the ROMU, then I would use this formula, right? Um, and of course, we can work our way from here to here, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to take it at face value. Okay. And so, and sure, maybe I'll highlight here that this is also... Uh, percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so let's do an example. Uh, ninety two. Merchant has a selling price of 13,500 for a small boat. The cost to the merchant is 9,950. 
calculate the ROMU and the GPM. Okay, so let's highlight what we know and figure out a way to get to what we want. So S is 13 and a half thousand. The costs to the merchant, right? So far, I'm feeling like these are, are quite obvious, right? Uh, S and C, 9950. It's not always the case. So if I have the selling price and if I have the cost, then uh, my if I have to find the ROMU first, for example, if I go back to my formula sheet here, I'm choosing between these top two formulas. Now, for me, it's obvious that I would want to use the first formula, right? Because I have the cost, I have the selling price, which means I can find the markup amount, right? And so, uh, so I'll be sitting pretty there, okay? And so we, we'll use the same thing to find the gross profit margin, although you could, you could find the wrong you uh, and use that as well. Right. And so lots of ways to solve for the same thing. The only reason I'm hesitant to, to find, to use the ROMU that I found earlier is because I'm relying on a previous result that I don't need to rely on necessarily. Right. And so it's just my, my preference. So here, um, the ROMU, we want to find Romu GPM. It's pretty explicit there, but um, just to follow the same pattern. So we know from the formula sheet that the Romu is M divided by C, I think it was. Yeah. M, right, we have a formula, it's E plus P, but I don't have either of those uh, items, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have uh, S is C plus M, right? I have two out of three things. As soon as I have two out of three things, I can solve for the third one easily, right? And so here, M is S minus C. And M is what we can use for both of these. And so the markup, 13,500 minus 9950 is 3,550. Okay. So that's the value that I'm gonna use, right? here. And then I have C. So now I can find that the ROMU is 3550 divided by 9950, which is 0.3568. Let me see here. Three five fifty divided by nine nine fifty. Oh, point three five six seven eight three nine whatever. Seven eight. I lost it. Keeps going, obviously, but I I don't know. I like to. I must have been going through some stuff when I wrote these notes a while back. I didn't write out all the values, which I always do. Must have been getting tired. Um. So then the rate of the markup. 
0.35 or roughly 3.568 or 35.68%. Right, because it's a rate. So one thing to keep in mind is that M is the markup amount, right? It's a dollar value, whereas the the ROM U itself, the rate of the markup is a percentage. And then we were asked to find the gross profit margin. It's either M over S or um, what was it? The ROMU over one plus the ROMU. We'll just check to make sure that we get, but because I am, because I'm using a rounded value here, right? It's not going to be exactly the same. So that's why I'm hesitant to use it. Um, but I'll just highlight. that that's the value that you would put in for the ROMU, right? 0.3568. Whenever you're doing math with a percentage, you use the per, uh, the proportion. But like I said, I like to play it safe and use kind of the, the, the information that relies the least on my math, right? Us finding M was kind of a necessary evil Right, but now I can use that. It's a whole number. I haven't done any rounding or anything, right? And so I can go ahead and use that. And everything else came from the question, so that's the safest way to play it. So I get uh, thirty-five fifty divided by S, which is thirteen thousand five hundred. Uh, plug that in, 0.26296, and then it seems to just be 0 0.26296. Or maybe it's two, anyways, something's repeating. Uh, or let's say 26.30%. Okay. Finally, Right, and I only say this because we're running out of time, but the last thing that we want to talk about, so these, although these four formulas take up space on your formula sheet, they're not going to be that heavy hitters, right? You're going to want to focus on kind of these, uh, these first five formulas that we introduced and then have these up your sleeve, but they're not going to be main events. Uh, but we do want to talk about markdowns before we go. So markdowns. A reduction, right? So what is it? We all know what a markdown is, right? Things are on sale. Ah, amazing. A reduction in the selling price of an item. So grabbing these last few formulas. Oops. Hey, doesn't want to do it. Copy. S subscript R is the reduced selling price.
right? S is the, the old selling price, right? The original selling price. This takes the same form as N equals L times one minus D, right? Same, same format. But now D is the rate of the markdown, okay? And the rate of the markdown is from here. So the Ramda, I know, it's fun to say. The Ramda is the rate. So a rate is a percentage, right? Or proportion of the markdown. And then D is the amount of the discount, okay? So it's the amount, oops. And it's really important that you recognize that it's an amount, right? It's not a proportion anymore. Uh, so the amount of the markdown which you could also call a discount, but you don't want to be confusing it with the discount rate, right? But similar. Uh, and then S again is the original selling price. Okay. Um, I've got an example. The sign on a rack of sport coats reads all prices marked down 30%. What is the regular selling price of the coat marked at 100 or 196.49, right? So we'll have two of these, but let's just work through the 100 and then I'll leave you to do B on your own. Okay. So first thing we're, we're going to have is we're given the Ramda is 0 0.30. What is the regular selling price? So S is equal to what? And of course, uh, they've already been marked down, but sometimes that's confusing. I even find that's confusing in the store, right? Is this the price or is it 50% off on top of this? I never know. But here I'm telling you that this is the reduced selling price. And same thing here, the reduced selling price is 196.49. Knowing that, part A, the reduced selling price is S times one minus the Ramda. So 100 is S, which I wanna solve for, times one minus 0.3, and I know I'm out of time, so that's why I'm going fast. S is 100 divided by 0.7. Whoa, where'd she go from? Uh, zero to hero, right? What did I do? One minus 0.3 is 0.7. I moved it over to the left-hand side. I did my revolving door. S is 100 divided by 0.7, putting me at a sales or a regular selling price of 142.86. I'll let you do um, do this one on your own. Okay. And uh, and then how about we use, let's see, there's a final example here. I'm gonna do part A as our review on Wednesday, right? And so, and then part B is the same, but opposite. So try those on your own and then, uh, and then you'll be gravy. All right, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise I will see you on Wednesday.
stop this recording here.